weekend. It's the Sunday studs, and Josh Allen was the biggest one of them all, right? Oh, absolutely. And we weirdly got a lot of questions about Josh Allen leading into this game. I don't know if people were concerned about the matchup or what they were seeing. Josh Allen is one of the best fantasy quarterbacks, if not the best fantasy quarterback, because I didn't see him out there throwing some weird interceptions at the end of the game. No disrespect, Kimmy. Okay, talk about <laughs> the Bears. Let's talk about that later. I don't, I'd rather not. <laughs> Let's talk about Josh Allen and how great he is. But no, I, I don't think that there should be any concern ever moving forward. So please, I will block you if you ever ask a question about Josh Allen again. <laughs> Uh, Sunday night football, quite the matchups between the Packers and the 49ers, and that connection between Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers was back. 31 fantasy points. He saw 18 targets, 132 receiving yards, and getting into the end zone for a touchdown. The most exciting play of the game was him catching that 25-yarder from Aaron Rodgers to get them in position for Mason Crosby to kick that field goal to win. So Devontae Adams, just elite yet again. I mean, what did you expect from a guy who was playing that game like 20 minutes from where he grew up? He got some home cooking. It was great. Right. Uh, Justin Herbert was also pretty great on Sunday for the Los Angeles Chargers. You know, it, he had just hadn't put together a full game. I mean, early in the season, the yards had been there, but he wasn't throwing a lot of touchdowns. It was turning the ball over. Put it all together, 281 yards, had the four touchdowns, no giveaways in the game. Uh, the only thing that's concerning just the next few weeks, he's got some tough defenses on tap, the Raiders, the Browns, the Ravens. But at this point, I feel like he's starting to get into a rhythm now, and it's okay putting him back in your starting lineup. Speaking of tough defense, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, did you guys know they won the Super Bowl? What? Not too long ago, no, right? It's not and like what? they returned to everybody. Well, all 22 starters <laughs> right? came back, yeah, <laughs> and they still couldn't stop Cooper Cup. They, and good news for the Buccaneers, they didn't blow a coverage like the first two games against the Rams, against Cooper Cup, but it did not matter. 12 targets. He he caught nine of them, including two scores. Check this, folks. Cooper Cup, really, really good. Your number one overall fantasy score thus far for the 2021 season. The breakfast. It has to be the breakfast. Right? Be. Two hour <laughs> breakfast. You guys, I found a new Alvin Kamara, and his name is Najee Harris. And I only say that because he had 102 receiving yards yesterday. And that is the most targets by a running back since Alvin Kamara back in 2020. 19 targets, 14 receptions for Najee Harris. Obviously, there are some injuries at the receiver's position for the Steelers, but Najee, the rookie breakout. I'm going to go ahead and humble brag this one because I called it in this oh. matchup. I know low hanging fruit because we expected him to be good, but he's fantastic. I thought you were going to say he had 102 targets, which is what it felt like when I watched that. <laughs> it did. That's what just, Ben wanted. Just checking it down to him the whole time. Speaking of targets and running backs, Kareem Hunt did his thing. Six catches, had 155 total yards, uh, also had a rushing touchdown. Look, the Browns remain the prime example of how you can have a productive running back rotation and have both guys be fantasy relevant. This was the Kareem Hunt week. Week one, it was a big Nick Chubb week, so you don't have to worry about either one of these guys. That offense is making these guys productive. It just works out so well with having either one of them. And I don't think it's outlandish to say that Kareem Hunt is the best pass catcher on that team right now. And speaking of pass catchers, how about Justin Jefferson against the Seattle Seahawks this week? Scored close to 27 fantasy points. Last week on NFL Fantasy Live, I was a little dismissive of Osborne. If somebody's like, should I start him? And I'm like, nah, whatever. Some dude blew me up on Twitter. And I'm like, oh, so you like him better than Justin Jefferson? And the guy's like, well, Justin Jefferson's fine. I, I think he's better than fine. I can <laughs> confirm right now, Justin Jefferson is good moving forward. And by the way, if I might be able to talk about his quarterback and take a little bit of a humble brag on Kirk Cousins, because this was a player in the beginning of the season, I said, you know what? I, for whatever reason, really like Kirk Cousins because I wasn't buying into the hype that the Vikings defense was back and that they were going to be in a similar situation to last year when they had to throw the football an awful lot. Remember, Kirk Cousins had eight games last season where he had at least three touchdowns. And if you've picked up Kirk Cousins recently, I think that he's your, your quarterback for the rest of the year. Mm. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions, and yes, Adam Rank was all over Kirk Cousins in 2021. Credit to Mr. Rank. Hey, speaking of a guy who was good in the past, he's back. James Robinson has been released from whatever kind of circumstance that slowed his start with Urban Meyer. Maybe Urban Meyer trusts him. Maybe it just takes time to get things going in the new offense, but 21 touches for James Robinson against the Cardinals. 25 points, had a score as well. James Robinson, it, it is glad. We are glad. We're glad. As a fantasy community glad. to have James Robinson uh, back in the end zone scoring points for our fantasy teams here in 2021.